Okay, so we're going to kick off now and uh, thank you for attending uh, this presentation today um, on, on the coolant saver. Um, so we're going to kick off with the presentation now last around about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, uh, we've got the chat function available on the Zoom, so anybody would like to ask any questions, please feel free or, uh, or, or you can ask as we, we go through and we'll have a, a couple of little session breaks in between to ask a question. Um, so yet, without uh, sort of uh, without further ado, let's kick off. Um, a couple of things that um, that Wogard um, are focusing on is obviously the reducing, reusing, recycling, um, but really is for the sustainability and for environmental awareness. Um, and a phrase that we're using a lot is the greening of machining, um, and how we can use this in, um, use this in the environment in manufacturing facilities. Um, so though this presentation is about the product, we'll have um, a little bit more at the end of the presentation to do with the sustainability um, and the greening and machining and how we're gonna be focusing on our new platform with regards uh, to this area. Okay, so we're gonna kick off now with the presentation. I hope you enjoy it and uh, let's crack on. So really what we're looking at is the coolant saver today is the issues in the manufacturing facility. Um, and some customers are aware, some facilities are aware of this, some facilities don't know how much actually coolant they're actually dragging out um, into the swarf bin uh, from the conveyor or the machine. Uh, in some cases, it's fairly easy visible to see the amounts you can see in the pictures on the right hand side. In some cases, you can't see it because there's so much swarf in the bin. But you know, in instances like this, we can see coolant, good coolant wasting, we could be 20, 30, 40 liters in each bin, in each shift. Um, and then you can do the mathematics to work out how much coolant and oil is being thrown away. Um, sometimes people get a little bit put off because they see a bin full of coolant and a black film over the top. And really this is the separation uh, of the oil and coolant. But remember what we're trying to look at is reclaiming the fresh coolant that goes straight into that swarf bin. So we reduce um, the effects of the disposal and the wastage. Um, and obviously there's a cost of disposal. Um, you know, there's, there's a high cost, not just physical costs in pound notes, um, but also in, we're just gonna have somebody else, uh, just coming in now, and uh, not just a, a cost in, um, we're just gonna start the, uh, we just got somebody else coming in now. So I'm just gonna start from the uh, problem on that again. Okay, so we're just looking at the uh, the problem. Hello. Hi, Dan. How are you doing? Hi, Jason. I'm good. Thanks. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah, no worries. No problem. Time. No problem. We've got we've got a few people on board, but it, as I say, it's uh, uh, good to see you. And how are things? Likewise. Yeah, no, yeah, not too bad. Good. Challenging. Good. Different. It's yeah, um, <laughs> you can say that um, again. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, not too bad. Good. Good. Well, we're just cracking on with uh, the presentation on the coolant and the oil saver at the moment. So we're only a slide in, so you haven't missed a great deal. Um, okay. Really, we're talk we're just really getting going with these these um, these uh, webinars. Um, today is particularly obviously on our, our product, um, but we're we're looking to uh, to focus more on sustainability and environmental awareness. So we're building kind of a new platform, and hopefully we'll we'll see a series of events with our our partners uh, and and about sustainability and environmental that should attract hopefully quite a big audience as this subject becomes more relevant uh, as you'll see um, with a focus on, on this amongst other things um, within manufacture, but smart products and smart manufacturing. So really we were just looking at the slide um, on the, the actual issues in, in manufacturing facilities. And I'm sure you've seen this and, and facilities where we have the swarf bin and the conveyor and, and, and a fairly large amount of drag out from coolants or neat oil that goes into the bin after the, after the conveyor. Some cases customers see this, some cases the end user or the facilities will see the amount of coolant and oil that's being dragged over. Sometimes they don't because it's covered in, uh, covered in swarf and they cannot see the actual amount that is being disposed of. But you know, we've seen cases of 10, 20, 30, 40 liters plus per shift per machine. So you can imagine the amount of coolant or oil that's being wasted could be drained and dragged out into the swarf bins. The cost of this disposal is extremely high, not only in pound notes, but to the environment. Um, and also there's a lot of manpower resource that has to be used on this area that sometimes gets put to the side. So these areas we see as, as quite obviously a, 
uh, uh, quite an issue in the manufacturing facility. And of course the environmental impact from not only wasted oil, but disposal, all that disposal oil and it has to be reprocessed, gets taken away by lorries, and then it has to be reprocessed to the wastage plant. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, of environmental issues there, the carbon emissions, the wastage oils um, on, on, the, uh, on the environment. So we've got, now we go see the, the solutions as the coolant and the oil save, and that's really what we're going to talk about. These are a couple of our initial products uh, that Woga have brought out. Um, we're looking at new products and our research and development, uh, really focusing on uh, environmental and uh, sustainability uh, areas in the machine shop. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the coolant saver initially, um, and this is the, basically the, the, uh, the kit that comes out um, with the unit. Um, this, this kit is for purely for soluble, though we can use it for knee toil if the pump pressure is good enough. Uh, all the viscous, viscosity of the oil is, is below uh, is about 10 or below 12 viscosity. Uh, but we do have a separate product for the sliding head machines. Okay, so we've got a video coming up on how it works, which shows it much better than words. I mean, we can talk about uh, this as we go through, but the, the couple of key points before we see the video uh, is how the actual unit works. I mean, one of the key areas is it works passively of the machine pump. So therefore, we do not have any additional power requirement of the unit. And we're really using the wasted power from the pumps and we take a very small amount through the unique nozzle system, creating the Venturi effect. And as we can see, there's a vacuum that goes into the swarf bang that brings up the coolant, it brings it straight back into the unit and back into the sump. So let's see that in action now. Um, with one of our new videos. So now we're going to see the coolant saver uh, in action and where we're reclaiming the fresh coolant as soon as it comes into that swarf bin after the conveyor. It's not hanging about. As soon as it drops the swarf into the, uh, the bin, the fresh coolant is automatically sucked straight back and into the machine. And the great thing is it works while the machine is on. So there's nobody having to turn it on or off. So you see that the machine's on, it's running, the vacuum, brings the coolant. I mean, we saw a lot of coolant in that bin, but obviously we'll be using it from an empty bin, so you would never see that amount of coolant. But it shows you how much coolant is wasted after drag out on some applications. It's very easy to install. Another nice attribute is it can take less than you know, 15 to 30 minutes to install on a machining center. Uh, various machines we put it on, no issues really. Uh, we put it on many, many different types of machining centers. Um, we usually tee off from the around spindle pump um, or the bed wash pump. We don't need, we don't want high pressure. So one of the standard prop pump pressures um, and it will tee from there. One of the pumps that has been running while the machine is on the majority of the time um, on that on that front. It takes a very low amount of pressure to run it. The coolant save is probably less than uh, 0.3 bar. So there's a very low amount taken away from them pumps, which are really, on all day long while the machine's running and we're really just tapping off like another uh, a coolant tap uh, to run the unit. Um, very often when we use the coolant saver, we have to reduce the regulator pressure because it doesn't require a very high pressure at all through the not unique nozzle system. Um, so as soon as it's on, we can see the fresh coolant being uh, brought straight back into the unit and then you see the outlet pipe there on the unit and that returns it straight back into the pump. So you've got kind of like a recirculating system there um, with the fresh coolant coming back up. Let's talk about, um, just a go, we do have complete uh, insulation manual with the unit, of course. Um, say the downtime, if you get all the fitting sealed and everything, the machine doesn't really have to be down uh, in the majority of cases from, for more than 15 to 30 minutes. Um, so it makes it fairly, you know, no, no issues with, with having to stop machines right there or anything like that. Uh, one thing we have worked on now is, is for insulation videos uh, are available on the YouTube channel. We have full insulation videos. We don't just have a, a type of, you know, a three minute one. We have a full 10 minute one that goes through exact stages of the insulation uh, process uh, on, on different machines. Uh, the support available, of course, 
and we do have an installation service if required. At the end of the day, we like to say it's really just, um, it, it's just basic plumbing um, into the pumps. Uh, there's no electrical, so there's no real um, major hazards. It's just checking the right pump. As I say, we only use low pressure pumps. We do not ever go off high pressure, so we keep away from the, the big boy pumps, as we call them, and we stick to the standard pumps. And as I say, we've got the new full installation videos available um, with, uh, with a step-by-step -step guide um, to how to install as well. I said the coolant saver kit comes with a standard um, half inch and three quarter inch straight and T fittings, which fit majority of machines. Um, we also have a three meter standard PU hose and one and a half meter 12 mil hose. That's the standard kit that will cope with majority of fittings, um, machines I should say, but we do have additional fittings for, um, particularly for the German style machines uh, where we've got metal piping coming off waste mounted pumps. Um, typically be an M30 or a light 22 hydraulic swivel T fitting uh, that will be teed into the system. We have a kit that makes it all nice and neat, brings it above the sump of the machine. Uh, and again, it's easy to set this all up before you go into the machine. So again, it doesn't have to be um, more than, you know, machine more down than more than 15, 30 minutes. Um, let's say the vacuum again can be extended on coolant. Say we've had it longer than 10 meters going up in the air, down in the air, around the corners. Um, that's no problem. The suction is really that good on, on the soluble type. Um, so six mil, additional six mil PU hose we can supply. Well, generally you may have that uh, available so we can extend that the vacuum. If it's a bit further, the conveyor from the pump, that's uh, no issue at all. So we do have vacuum protector option. This really is for the purpose. I mean, the vacuum head, which we'll talk about in a moment, has got a filtered metal gauze system. Uh, but we have a uh, vacuum uh, protector standard um, with a metal square tubing with a, with a telescopic clamp. I can go up and down the tubing. Uh, this is still construction. It has scallops at the bottom. Um, we do two various heights, 660 for standard bins and 750. Um, and uh, again, that just makes it easy to take that vacuum cup out of the bin as soon as the bin's full and then pop it straight in when it comes back in. So it's just for ease of use there for the operator or, or, or whoever's taken the swarf bin as well. We do have a, a new system um, of the, uh, the, the fixed vacuum where the fixed vacuum cup is actually fitted into every single swarf bin. It's kind of more, probably more for production, higher production facilities where we have many bins going in and out, uh, maybe uh, forklift systems, but this system is a fixed um, uh, fabrication that fits on the bin. And then we just have a quick fit release system at the top there so again it can what's good about it is it can be used for various types of bins angles straight edges with a angle edges and stuff like that so it can be bent to suit each bin um, so that's a standard kit now that we're offering um, with with the uh, units as well um, talk about the vacuum heads uh, stain is still construction with a metal filter mash uh, 0.3 mic uh, 0.3 millimeters um, Non-return valve to ensure there's no flow back of coolant when the machine is stopped. Again, very low maintenance requirement on this, the old blowout of the vacuum head. And we can use the, the uh, vacuum head in most swarf applications. It can actually sit in the swarf, a very fine swarf, um, and not cause any issues. Probably the only time when there may be times to have a look at uh, uh, um, some more filtering is when you have uh, maybe uh, uh, more of a, uh, 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 like a cast iron, if it's a sludge type of grinding, that can then for, can cause blockages. So you might have to use a, a additional filtering away from the vacuum cup there. But they're more in the minority of applications than the main sort of machining applications uh, that we work with. Okay, so we're just going to jump on to the um, the next product, the oil saver. Um, there is, uh, yeah, um, any questions do we have out there? Um, we've got the chat feature, chat feature or you please shout away. Okay, right, we're gonna move on now to the, uh, the oil saver. Now this product works in a similar fashion um, to the coolant saver in that you're reclaiming the needle from the uh, 
the swirl pin back into the machine, but it is being uniquely developed with, for sliding head machines um, that use a higher viscosity, a higher thickness oil um, than coolant, which can be less than six viscosity. And we can use the oil saver up to and including on 22 sensor stokes. We can go higher, but we sometimes we have to be careful on the pump pressure um, and the flow pressure, I should say, that goes through uh, the pumps um, that we use to connect to onto the sliding head machines. Um, what we've done with the system, it does have a unique internal nozzle system that requires a very low amount of pressure to reclaim the knee tool. It can be less than 0.1 bar to activate the suction. Of course, the suction is not as high as you see in the coolant. It is slower, but it will keep up with the drag out rates, um, no problem. Um, and we do have a different system nozzle in this system. So we do have a, a, a slightly tighter nozzle hole system. Um, so we do have a, a particularly good clean out system if, if there's any issues um, when it needs cleaning. So anyway, that's uh, enough of the, um, the, uh, the talk. Let's have a look at it in action. And you can see here, we're gonna, we're gonna see it in a machine shop with a full of uh, sliding head machines and how it's teed off. Um, again, we typically would use the main oil pump um, or cooling pump from the machine. We do not come up high pressure again. Um, usually there's one pump to select off uh, on, on the system. And here we go, we can see the, the typical uh, neat oil being dragged out into the, uh, into the swirl bin. You can see here the uh, vacuum protector and the filter head there as well. You can see that pulsing. Probably uh, you, you can see there the knee tool going up to here. You can see it's teed off there and the downward pipe is exited and downwards into the sump of the oil sump of the machine. And that will always be full of oil to see it in action. All types of machines are teed off there. We can see it's um, on a star, and we can see how the teeing off is a simple one inch tee um, system on there, which suits, uh, suits a lot of the sliding head machines. So it will work on up to 22, and including 22 center stokes. Again, using the power from the machine, it will, so it work when the machine's on or off. When the machine's on, I should say. And therefore, resulting in in a in a bin that has got a lot less, uh, obviously many liters less uh, oil in this in the swirl bin. I think the key to say with with an e oil, um, we, we we in a lot of applications uh, we use it on on the sliding heads, um, which reduces the amount of wastage, of course. Um, and what I, what I would say um, with the system, uh, we've just done many applications, even uh, where we have brass applications where the knee oil has to, the, the application, the swirl has to be 3% dry, which still requires it to be uh, in a centrifuge or a spinning system. Um, but we do many uh, installations on sites where they have the spinning and, and what they have really benefited is, is the reduced amount of resources requirement for the spinning because we've just done an application where they had so much oil in the bins, it, it was actually too much for the, uh, the, the, the spinner to handle. So in fact, it caused issues and mess and more resources in that system. So what they found was that, that we can get it pretty dry in a majority of cases, particularly with brass where you have to get even drier, where um, it actually reduces the, uh, the amount of spinning and the, the mess uh, and the issues around that. Um, so if that answers any questions on the on the oil side, we also have an easy clean out system for small debris uh, in the system if it ever does get uh, uh, blocked. In some cases, some cusps we see people don't even know it's there. In some applications, though, we do get a fair amount of a swarf that's already in the sun. So we, it's quite useful to have the clean out system uh, on that. The actual kit comes with one inch straight and T fittings, typically used for sliding head machines. Um, it comes standard with three mil PU hose and one meter of the outlet pipe. Um, what I would say, going back on that one, is we can go further from the bin to the pump. 
Um, probably not as long as 10 meters, we'd probably say around about five meters. And again, depending on the thickness of the oil and the pressure that we can receive on that one. Okay, so any questions on the oil saver? Okay, so we're gonna move along now uh, to the uh, insulation examples. So we've got a video here showing sort of many different types of uh, insulations on different machines. Just give you an idea of, of how it's uh, installed and how easy it's installed. Even this particular, these ones are more sort of uh, where we're just really locating where the main around spindle pump is and the best and the easiest place to tee off. And once we have the fitting suitable, it's a case of just straight in with the unit. Even machines like this where we have to go inside the machine, a little bit more uh, work to be done here. But again, once you know where it is, a case of just getting in there and installing the system. See an extender piece on the PU hose there, when it's a little bit lot further away from the uh, from the uh, conveyor. And the little kits that we do there that can be installed to bring the uh, the, the vacuum uh, the unit above the um, pump of the machine, uh, the tank of the machine. Again, just using the standard fitting kits uh, on this machine, the Matsura here, we have it going straight into the around spindle pump using the standard three quarter T and straight fittings. We can see the oil saver installed here um, on Sitsa machine. So you're using the T and straight there. And on the star here, same thing with an inch and a T fitting. We see it just straight up to the pump there and locating and going straight back into the sump on the side of the machine. So again, it's a fairly straightforward insulation um, that can take less than 30 minutes. Okay, so one of the things uh, we have got, we have just launched, and we were obviously hoping to launch uh, a little bit uh, wider on the uh, at Mac, um, which is obviously now been delayed. So hopefully we'll have it back on in January. Um, I think it possibly will be the first exhibition we'll see. I'm not sure if we'll see any others this year, but we do have this unit on action uh, with our conveyor system. But it's our, our what we're calling our, our MagSaver kit. So this is in combination with Eclipse uh, uh, magnetic filtration system. And basically an online, we can pair it up with our unit and link it up to actually not only save coolant oil, it will actually clean it as well. So in the, on magnetic materials, of course, uh, via magnetic filtering. But it means that we can put it in line with the, uh, with the main coolant line. And so therefore, we are not only saving it using our unit, but it's being cleaned as well from any metal particulate that's in the swarf that can cause degradation on the coolant and reduce its life. So we see all the benefits, of course, of the coolant and the oil saver units, which we do the kits for. Um, but we see that we can extend fluid life by removing the fine particles that cause um, the contamination. And therefore, that can be uh, a dramatic increase in, in life of the coolant. Um, improve its uh, improve its quality going onto the cutting saw. And again, it's nice and easy to install. It comes in a kit that joins it all together and can be installed in line with the uh, with the coolant and oil saver. So that's a new kit that we have, and we'll be talking about this more in the future. Um, and we will have this uh, where we have to have this installed on our, um, our on our uh, conveyor system, as I say. Uh, so yeah, so that that's going to be something new new to so that we'll be talking about soon. Or we have out now, I should say. So, like I say, where's, who's using the coolant saver and oil savers? Okay, we, we know the many areas in industry from aerospace automotive going through to OEMs and subcontracts. We have companies, you know, with a few machines, multiple installations of 100 plus machines, seeing the benefits of, of, a, uh, of a sort of simple system. One of the things we have done as well is many editorials from aerospace, 
So it's really sure, as you can see there, from our technical partnerships with OEMs um, and to subcontract companies. We'd love to shout about it. Um, and we'd like to see what people are doing in customers that are facilities are doing to improve environmental, saving coolants and oil, which I think is a great thing to be doing. Um, as for the cost savings as well, we're not only being environmental, we're saving an awful lot of money. Um, so we've seen in cases, typical case savings on coolants here, um, can be up to 2,000 more per machine annually. So return on investment is very quick and we've got the environmental benefits and the resource savings as well. Uh, one question we do have, uh, you know, we do see from time to time is people still using uh, taps. Um, though it's, uh, we're seeing a bit of a part of this as a thing in the past, we still see it from, from time to time. Um, they're not the greatest. We have applications where we've seen customers and done analysis of them. Um, obviously, they're not very good vision wise. The health and safety is particularly poor. It needs manpower to activate them, which sometimes they overfill, go on the floor. Um, and they're not that fast and they don't drain all the coolant and the oil and they can cause more issues. So as you can see here, we've also drained many liters using the tap method. And then we've actually got a customer who was not doing it now. We were using a forklift to drain the bins afterwards as well. And this bin on the right, which I'm going to show you a quick video with in a moment shows a bin that was tapped off and then further drained with a forklift afterwards. So you can see how much wastage um, from the tapping and time it does to that. So it's still, you're losing a lot of it, um, as you can see from the forklift. We've got a couple of videos coming up here. Um, they're not the, uh, the most professional ones in the world, but uh, they show the point. Um, you can see here, obviously that's a, a tap and coolant system. Um, you can see the coolant just dragged down there. And this is a swarf beer that uh, was just um, half full of, of swarf. So dramatic amount of coolant that's been dragged over into the swarf bin. And on the right hand side is the same bin that was drained further after tapping on a forklift. Incredible amounts of coolant using. And this would be daily, um, a daily exercise for the, for the uh, guy on the forklift to do this. And he says he can't keep up with it, let alone uh, you know, uh, the issues on time and uh, on his time there as well. So quite resource intensive. Okay, so some of the, uh, the functionalities, uh, the savings calculator we have available for cooling usage and we can give you some um, good cost analysis on the savings on how much cooling you use per year. Cause it is quite hard sometimes uh, to know how much uh, wastage you're creating. Either a swarf collector doesn't advise you or just deducts it. Um, but the, I have been to small places where they, they do have to weigh the bins and then take out the coolant and then bring it back. Uh, and their liters and kilograms difference is, is amazing. Um, so there's a lot of wastage there. And we can do some rough coordination uh, cost savings on our calculator, which is available online or an Excel spreadsheet uh, that, can, uh, that can quickly advise you on a rough idea on how much it's costing you and how much we can give you as a savings. We can do a more detailed um, report like this one if it's on a multiple uh, installation site, you know, 35, 45, 50 machines, um, where we would obviously go in, have a look at, and possibly do an audit um, on the facility. But we can do that working out number of machines um, you have in the facility, coolant usage per month, uh, price per litre, coolant concentration, and disposal information available. So then factors there, we can then bring up a um, quite a good cost analysis report for you. Um, and say we, we do site observations and pictures you know this is just the many sites we go to we see this type of thing um, I take the pictures and then we can actually you know a lot of customers like to trial and we have a, a system here where they had a machine that was being freddied out every day they wouldn't reuse the coolant because it was just mixing it with other coolants and that's another key thing about the system we're bringing back the same coolants or need to back into the same machine, which is critical as well for, for coolant life uh, and also contamination issues with both need to oil and coolant, especially if the customer's doing medical work or sensitive work. So this is a site trial that we can see in application here. You can see it before installation, it's installed in less than 30 minutes, and then from a high amount of wastage um, uh, onto um, high amount of wastage to, down to milliliters. And therefore, remember, we wouldn't be putting the vacuum cup into a full bin. It will always be an empty bin, and the bin will look like that uh, at all times. Um, but just to give you an idea, that bin was clear, clean, uh, vacuumed out. It was uh, 
return in, in around about 30 minutes. Let's give you the, the amount of litres per minute. It probably does about a litre a minute. The uh, coolant saver, the oil saver, slightly so, so up to about 0.1 to 0.25 litres per minute, depending on the viscosity. Okay, so we, we see the benefits up to, you know, coming up to 50% coolant saving, depending on the application, 90% saving disposal, um, and environmental benefits on the system. Quick to install and to see it in action is, is fairly instant to see the benefits. Um, and obviously we see the additional benefits of the manpower reduction, swarf value, improved housekeeping and health and safety. I've got a question there. How long does it take to uh, to install any coolant or oil saver roughly? As I said, it, it it's really is. Um, if you've got it all the, the parts sealed up and put together, um, it can be less than 30 minutes. We have our customers say to us that they get their apprentices to do it and they do it in 15 minutes now. Once you know how to do it and which pump to come off, um, it's very, very quick. Okay, so sustainability environment. Um, I think we know you know, with the issues we're having today, with everything, it's quite tough. You know, I think the, the next big issues we'll have in, in manufacture, um, you know, it's a big challenge as it is, is going to be sustainability and smart manufacturing uh, through this way. We, we're aware of, you know, our products as a, as a small piece of the jigsaw, um, but we can see the impact of what the wastage on coolant, oil, the coolant has to be processed, separated, so there's a lot of issues going on there. Um, and so we really want to be focused on, um, on this area uh, and keeping the area clean uh, and environmental as, as such as 14,000 as one. Um, so as part of this um, um, presentation, we, we are also now going to be incorporating a, uh, a new focus on sustainability and environment uh, with a new platform um, that we hope to get many of our partners, technical partners, OEMs, end users on board with. Um, and it's going to be like a, a sustainability platform on, on help and hints, um, key partners where to go. Uh, and we'll also have independent speakers on there as well. This site will have a membership site on where you can link up, get all the latest information. We'll have download sites, um, download uh, items on there. We'll have a sustainability checklist on sustainability, um, on how we can uh, uh, improve and, and use this, uh, some of the partners and stuff like that on, on, on the, and stuff like um, partner events. Uh, we'll be looking at participating in um, events with our partners, um, could be on applications and, and smart products. And we'll also have independent experts um, on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the webinars, uh, industry experts, We'll be looking at the environment and we hope to come up with some of these events in the next couple of months um, and the schedule then and an ongoing schedule that will really hopefully start getting uh, the interest uh, in this area and of course we'll have new products uh, and some of the latest stuff that we're working on which we hope to launch later on this year so uh, in the climate at the moment but what I should say it's really is part of it being part of the greening on machining and how we can be profitable by being green which is very much a, got to be done. You know, we can't just do all these things that cost us a fortune. We've got to have these things and have the circular economy. So environmental economy and, and really hopefully we'll, we'll be bringing a, a site that will uh, help us uh, on that. We've just put the link on there to our membership page on, on, the, uh, uh, on the new site. It is in its infancy, so please bear that in mind. But we really hope to get people excited on this and, and really get our, our key partners involved in this, which we will be doing soon. And you'll start seeing more of that on there as we build this up. This is kind of like an initial step on, uh, on, on doing that. And just to give you an outcome so far for, for us as a company, um, we, we've nearly supplied, um, well, we we're over 5,000 uh, supplied globally. Um, we've done some logarithms uh, working on how much we're saving. We're over 45 million litres of coolant saved so far. Um, and as I say, we, we, the upward climb, because we're always saving, it, it's quite dramatic on the amount of litres we're saving uh, every day per year. And that will grow. grow um. Okay, so, yeah, thank you very much, guys, for attending. Um, and if there is any questions, please shout away. Um, we'll have downloads available on the... Uh, uh, I say on the sustainability membership site, 
Um, yeah, so is there any questions? Uh, no, not from me, Jason. Thank you very much. Very, very interesting. No, thank uh, you, Neil. Thank you for attending. Yeah, it's great yeah, to hear from you. Thank you. Okay, we, we do have a question. Um, can it be installed in centralized coolant systems? Yes, it can. Yeah, we do have applications where we have it on central systems. Uh, that's not an issue. Again, it's just a case of uh, just ensuring where they install insulation and where it's returned, which some it's returned to. But yeah, we, we do have it on centralized systems as well. Yeah, it's nothing for me, Jason, but no, that's from my point of view anyway, it's very, very helpful. So, Great stuff. No, okay, Dan. Appreciate, uh, appreciate that a lot. No worries. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Thank you for your time. Hope, hope everything's uh, going okay and, and stay well. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, cheers, cheers guys. Jason. Thanks. Uh, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.